What is going on guys, welcome back to another video, and today we have yet another retro console. This time it's actually a pretty interesting one, and a pretty exciting one to check out. What we have here is the Pandora's Box 5S, or as they have listed it now, as Pandora's Key, because this is a clone console. Basically what this is, is a retro arcade console with built-in dual player controls. It's got a built-in speaker, a ton of function, and once again, this is a clone console. And being a clone console, it does add some function that is nice to have, which also leaves a lot of space inside the console itself, which leaves some room for modding and turning this into something else. And we'll talk more about that in just a bit. The model that we have here is the Super Street Fighter Picture Edition. And at first, I thought the picture here looked kind of uh, pretty bad on the website because it did look like it was kind of washed out, low quality, low res. But I have been actually really surprised by how good this actually looks. The quality on this photo right here, it's uh, it's pretty great. Very high resolution picture, and overall, uh, you won't be disappointed getting this variant of the console. Because originally I was worried that it was going to look pretty bad, but it's actually pretty nice. And I'll probably say that this is the best one out of the bunch when it comes to looks. Again, there are different color schemes and uh, pictures, and I'll leave links for those in the description below. Currently, it's going for around $140. It's actually on sale. The original price, I believe, is around $220. But this is the 999 games variant. And there are a couple different variants with 888 and the 1220 game variant, which again, I'll leave links for in the description below. Let's go ahead and first take a look at the joysticks that are built into here. So we have two controls. We have the start and the insert coin buttons for both player one and two. And something that you might appreciate here is that the joysticks here are actually pretty nice and high quality. They feel very tactile, very responsive, and overall you shouldn't be too disappointed when it comes to the joysticks. However, when it comes to the main controls, it's kind of a different story. These buttons don't feel the best, and personally I don't have much arcade experience or anything that has to do with these kind of buttons, but I can tell you right now, these aren't the highest quality buttons. That said, you can actually replace these fairly easily, but overall they do work and they don't get stuck, except for the bottom right player 2 button right here. If you press it too far to the right side, it will actually get stuck and it doesn't feel the best, but uh, you do actually get two replacement buttons right over here, and we're actually going to be replacing that button with these at the end of this video to see how easy it is to replace these buttons, because they're just standard buttons that you can easily replace and uh, get different colors, different variants, and just pretty much customize this as you'd like. The included replacement buttons right here are actually tactile buttons, so they're not the usual mushy buttons like these, they're actually tactile. Really, it's going to come down to preference on what you like, if you like mushy buttons, or if you like the tactile clicky buttons like these. And speaking of clicky buttons, these start and insert coin buttons are actually tactile, and they are the smaller version of these buttons. I said buttons way too many times. Uh, yeah, so, stickers are pretty good. These are okay. These are pretty good. These are pretty good. These are okay, and these are... You get the idea. Now quickly moving on to the front side, we actually have three screws that you can take apart and be able to access the insides of this console and see what kind of stuff we have in there. I've already taken a look inside. There's a lot of empty space I can make use of. On the right side, we get the loudspeaker, which actually sounds pretty good, which is pretty useful, and I'll tell you why in just a bit. And moving on to the left side, we have the ventilation fan, which allows the console to cool down. And finally, in the back, we have the goodies, where we have things like the power switch, the power input, an HDMI out, a VGA out, which is pretty awesome, which is pretty awesome because it's gonna allow you to hook this up to a CRT monitor for that classic look and that low latency input, a dedicated 3.5mm audio out, a volume controller for the built-in speaker, a configuration button which will allow you to customize a couple things here and there inside the console itself, and two USB ports. And at this point you're probably asking, what is the USB for? Well, let me tell you. What you can actually do with these USB ports is something that is pretty awesome, that makes this console way more useful than what it is already. A standalone retro arcade console. But with this included USB Type A to Type A cable that is actually pretty long and pretty decent, it would allow you to hook this thing up to your computer and use the built-in controls on these, the Player 1 and Player 2, both of them, as inputs for your fighting games on your computer. And no, you don't need extra power to power this thing up, all you need is this USB cable and the console itself, and you're good to go. And with no drivers needed, you'll be instantly able to actually use this thing to play games on your computer and simply make use of these controls, which is pretty awesome. And the latency is actually almost non-existent, but we're going to be testing out the latency and seeing what kind of latency we have, hopefully with some slow-mo footage. Yeah, we'll see how that goes somewhere in this video. And finally, before we go ahead and take a look at the interface and play some games, here's what you get inside the box. So here's what the box looks like. Here's what you get, a Type-A to Type-A cable that's pretty long, the AC adapter which runs at 12 volts, 3 amps, and uses a standard PC plug connector which is pretty awesome, it's a pretty easy to find cable, it does have some matching points, it also uses a standard plug right here, a manual, the two extra buttons, the VGA cable which is also pretty long and pretty awesome, and a pretty high quality and pretty lengthy HDMI cable included. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and power this thing up, play some games, and see how it performs. Let's go. Alright, so I went ahead and hooked up the console to two monitors. One of them is an HDMI monitor, and the other one is a VGA monitor, and they're both hooked up 
at the same time to the console. So let's go ahead and turn on and see what we end up with. There's the RGB. And if you're wondering, yes, both monitors will actually run at the same time if you hook both of them up. And you also get this uh, intro music. And right now the sound is actually playing through the side speaker from here. Not from the monitors because these monitors don't actually have any speakers built in. And there we go, Pandora's Key 5S. Now if you're wondering, this is actually a TCL 31.5 inch curved 1800R monitor. It's a VA panel and we have reviewed it in previous videos. I'll leave links for it in the description below. It's simply a really beautiful, gorgeous display. And we're over here, we have a Mag Innovation display. Over here we have the RGB LEDs uh, going through. Let's go ahead and turn off the lights completely. So that's what that looks like. Uh, it glows and it's pretty cool. And of course, since it is a standard RGB strip, you can add your own and just pretty much light this thing up completely and just fill it up with LEDs all around. All it has is a simple LED strip in the center. But anyways, yeah, that's what the interface looks like. That's what that looks like while it's turned on. And the last thing I'm going to show you guys is uh, the sound here. So let's take a listen. The sound that you hear is actually coming from the side fan right here. Some would consider it pretty loud. In my opinion, it's in the middle. It's not too noisy, but it is definitely there. Once you start playing, you'll probably forget about it. But uh, if you're looking for something silent, then this is not the thing for you, obviously. That said, you probably don't even need the fan. You might be able to change it or just turn it off completely. But once again, at the end of this video, we're going to take this apart and take a look inside. And now, all that's left to do is to go ahead and play some games and see how it performs. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so here's what the interface looks like. You got a bunch of things going on here, and uh, every game has pretty much a preview video, which is something that is pretty awesome to see, which can be pretty handy when you don't know what you're playing. Here's a quick look at the configuration button. If you click it in the back of the panel, it will show you up to this menu, and it will give you this lovely music. Alright, and over here you can do things like uh, testing out the controls, and uh, making sure that everything works. And then you can go back, and change a few settings here and there. There's quality optimization, I so far haven't seen the quality difference yet. And then moving on to game settings, uh, we can click that. And then you can actually remove some of the games or add a favorites list. So you're only browsing the games that you want and filter out all the games that you don't really care about. And you can also change things like difficulty, live. All right, let's uh, quickly close that before I get a copyright strike. All right, so I just scrolled through the whole game list and I will leave a dedicated video for you guys to check out to see what kind of games there are on the system. I'll leave the links for that in the description below for all 999 games. Now let's go ahead and play some games, enjoy some stuff and see how it performs in certain games. And yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. So that's what it's gonna sound like when you start a game. It will uh, give you the Battle City intro soundtrack music and followed by a ready go. Some games don't have the ready to go in the end, so maybe there are two different systems that are running. So right now the game is running, it's pretty smooth. And I uh, can't see what I'm doing because the camera's in the way. And now the game is lagging because there's a ton of things going on on the screen. So this thing is not perfect, it is gonna lag, which means the game is already unplayable at this point. But as soon as things go off the screen, uh, the game goes back to full speed. Let's go ahead and switch to another game. You press the uh, play pause button and it will bring you to this menu. Now if you go ahead and run something like Afterburner 2, you can notice that the game lags horribly. Yeah, the sound is terrible, the performance is terrible. Let's just stop it right there and uh, play something that is actually playable. So yeah, not all games are going to run 100% speed. I don't know why they even include it. I'm just going to take it off the list eventually. What is this? There are so many games that you just want to scroll through and just give it a try. I mean, like this one right here, Alien Swarm. It looks intense. Oh yeah, this brings back so many memories at the arcades. With the uh, games that actually have guns. Oh. That was an intro that I missed. I think there are two stages. 2D and first person. 
This one requires two players in order to play, and it'll give you a third one, which is a bot. It's a really smooth game, and it's actually pretty easy to control. And it's got drifting, it's got guns. There's some Batman, there's some uh, Pong kind of game with volleyball or something. And if there's someone who has kids around the household, uh, they're going to definitely enjoy this. That is if you're getting it for the kids, because there are a ton of games they can actually hand over and uh, have kids play, like uh, Battle Chopper. And since you do have the option to uh, remove games from the list, you can easily limit the games and just select the ones you want to have your kids play or whatever. There we go, we have some good old Battle City. Battle City. Game never gets old. Maybe it does. But I'll always have a space for it in my heart. I really enjoyed the uh, building mode in this game, where you can actually build your own level, which was pretty awesome. Oh, this was my sandbox game. Here's some uh, Bay Route. It looks like Baywatch in a uh, Contra mode. It's a side-scrolling shooting game. Best of Best. <laughs> Another fighting game that looks pretty cheesy. Big Striker Soccer. What? Now we're playing some Blade Master. The game looks pretty intense. I like the animations. Marvel vs. Capcom, a game that many of you are probably going to be playing on this thing mainly. A whole lot of. Alright, so Marvel vs. Capcom runs beautifully, and there weren't any lags that I noticed. Uh, the game ran perfectly fine. Okay, let's just stop here. This game is creepy. It seems like uh, some games like this are broken. Most of the games I'm seeing that are broken is actually from Sega. Um, right here, as you guys have heard, the main game music was low, but the voices were... they were pretty loud. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. It's a fighting game with JoJo's. Pretty interesting. Let's see how that runs. And now we are in the King of Fighters uh, territory. There is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 22 I, I can't. There is definitely over 40 variants of King of Fighters. So if you're a fan of King of Fighters, then uh, this is the system to get. That said, let's actually go ahead and play one of these. And let's go ahead and play uh, 2004 Ultra Plus. Let's see how it runs. Let's go ahead. Alright, so King of Fighters runs beautifully, just fine, no problem.
And now we're at the M's, and here we can find the Marvel games. There's a ton of Marvel games, and uh, we got Marvel Super Heroes, Marvel Super Heroes, another one, some kind of different variant. Street Fighter, uh, Classic, which is actually Marvel vs. Street Fighter again, and then Marvel vs. Capcom, and then Marvel vs. Street Fighter again. Uh, you know, all the variants. Not all of them, but most of them. And uh, you guys probably see a trend here. Every time there is a uh, big major classic game, there are a ton of variants of it. And this thing is loaded with Metal Slug. We get all the Metal Slugs, all the pluses, all the variants. All right, so here we go, Metal Slug 10 plus. I think we have passed like three games with the name Commando in them. Here we have some... Oh. Is this what I think it is? This is Bubble Trouble. And it's called Pang. That We have to play this now. Alright, here we go. Just like it is on mini clips. This is probably a nostalgia right here in a new format. Probably in its original form. Panic 3 actually has uh, a couple options here. So you have uh, Panic. Let's see what happens with Panic. Alright, we got more options. Oh. Interesting. Each character has their own uh, kind of spikes. One of the other ones that I played actually had uh, two individual ones you can actually launch. Rampage, which is uh, Wrecker Ralph in the original format. Ring of Destruction, this game looks tense. Robocop, Robo Army, Riot City, Samurai Showdown. All right, this looks pretty interesting, let's try it out. Okay, it's a fast-paced game and you don't have much HP because you get sliced like a real samurai. A couple variants of Sungaku, we got uh, about four of them. Super Street Fighter 2, and of course, all the different variants that you're gonna find. Shinobi, SNK versus Capcom. Now that's pretty interesting. Sonic the Hedgehog, okay, now we have to try this out. Yeah, something about that Sonic game doesn't feel right. The sound doesn't sound right, the background, the water was black. Clearly, there's a lot of things missing in that game, so, oh well. More Street Fighter, and even more Street Fighter. Oh, hey, look, we have Mario. Let's see if it uh, plays properly. And hey, what do you know? We got Outrun. Alright, so unfortunately Outrun doesn't run well. You can clearly hear the sound is broken. Again, it's another Sega game. Seems like it's a trend. Seems like the emulator they're probably using maybe is an older version that can't run. Or the CPU that's built in here that's uh, pretty terrible. <laughs> Off the 
Alright, so that's it pretty much for the games. So we played a couple, actually a ton of games we played. Uh, we have actually went through the whole list and I picked out a few games here and there to play. More like 20 games I've probably played by now. I gotta edit all those. So what have we learned? Well, second games don't seem to run properly on this console. Most likely you probably wanna take them off, put a list of things you wanna take off and then open up the configuration menu and disable those games from showing up on the list. And yeah, now all I have to do is go ahead and take a look inside the console itself and see what we are working with. And something you probably noticed by now is that there's actually no fan noise. And that is because I've actually turned it off and I'll show you how. Yeah, I cut the wire. All right, so to open this thing up, you have three different screws over here that we have already taken apart. And once you take those apart, the console will open up like so. And yes, it does have two hinges right there, but unfortunately it doesn't stay in place. So you want to put something to stop it. Something like this thermometer. All right, so here's what it looks like on the inside. We got all the buttons and they're very easy to access and replace, so we can simply pop them off and no soldering needed. Everything is just everything just simply clips in. And in the case of the joysticks, you just have four screws for each of them. And if you're wondering, yes, you can actually take apart the sticker on the front, which is the picture, and end up with a fully transparent top panel, which will probably look cool. Now, taking a look at the motherboard itself, we can see that it is a clone. It's not the original JAMA board. The JAMA board has like a big aluminum piece, and it covers a big portion of the console itself on the inside. So, yes, this is the clone. And right here, we can see that it's using an all-winner A13 CPU and some kind of RAM, uh, Hunix RAM. I think it was 2 gigs or something. I'll leave the information up here and probably a high resolution picture of what it looks like. The connector right here is what hooks up all these buttons right here. And uh, if you look at it, it kind of looks like some kind of develop on board. Right over here, we have the speaker hooked up through this blue connector right here. And the other connector beside it actually hooks up both the power button as well as this LED strip, which is also powering this fan. That was pretty noisy. That I have disconnected by cutting one of the wires. So that's what the LED strip looks like. It's a 50-50 LED strip. And I think the controller is inside of here. But if you have taken a look at the beginning of the video, uh, the LED doesn't cover the whole system. Mostly this part, but this part is kind of going dark. So if you want, you can extend the LED and have just a big piece all around. And one last thing, under these two QC stickers, or three, you actually have the SD card. And that is what you want to back up probably if you get this console. You want to make a clone of it, some kind of ISO on your computer, just in case that this SD card fails. And if you're wondering, no, and if you're wondering, no, you cannot actually add any more games unless you know how to hack it or something. And so far I have researched and it doesn't seem like anyone has been able to do so. We got our 16 gigabyte SD card. It's a class four and uh, you definitely wanna make a backup of it just in case if it fails. Now you're probably asking, what can you do with this empty space? Well, you can actually install a Raspberry Pi or whatever you want that fits in here and hook it up via USB. If you guys remember the USB here, you can actually hook it up to your computer and you'll be able to use both player one and two controls for your computer to play your own Steam games or whatever you want. Someone has already done this before, we might do it in the future on the other channel, but basically he put a Raspberry Pi, he hooked it up to the USB and uh, he simply powered it with a power bank or something or hooked it up directly to the five volt line. And just like that, he was able to have a Raspberry Pi or I should say a dual console system, a Raspberry Pi as well as the arcade machine in one system. And that was pretty cool. So he uh, expanded the emulation of this machine way beyond what it could do right now. Now to replace these controls, you simply grab a pair of pliers or something and safely take out these connectors. And then you wanna squeeze the two tabs here and push this thing all the way out. I recommend using a screwdriver and working one side at a time. Take this out, put in the new one, and you're good to go. Now if you're worried about cooling, about the fan being turned off by simply cutting one of the wires right here, well, this tiny fan, I don't think it does much, and most of the air is just leaking from these holes around this area. None of the air is coming from the side here, and I think it barely does anything to cool down the CPU. Now, I've ran this thing without this fan for hours on end, and there weren't any problems whatsoever. Uh, this thing does get hot on the surface, and I've measured it, and so far I've got 57 degrees Celsius max, uh, it didn't go any higher, but it does get warm, and if you're worried about cooling, you can get one of those mini copper or aluminum heatsink pieces that you can glue on. They usually pop on a Raspberry Pi. Alright, and last but not least, hooking this thing up to your computer via USB. So here we have the USB Type-A to Type-A cable hooked up to my USB hub, hooked up to my computer, and here it is on my screen. So, as soon as you hook it up, you will instantly, at least if you're Windows 10, it will instantly find out what this thing is, and it will set it up for you. So no drivers needed. All you have to do is simply hook it up and you can go to your gamepad settings and you'll see that it is there. So the latency here is actually pretty impressive. I'm gonna do a quick test right now in slow-mo and see how it looks. 
basically it's pretty responsive and um, and if this is your first fight stick it's not going to be too bad at least you have two controls to play with someone else so both of you won't be at a disadvantage basically you both have latency if there's any which of course probably there's the point is, is that I can use this thing other than what it is right now you can hook it up to your computer and make use of it as a portable two-player fight stick so let's go ahead do the slow-mo test and see what we end up with So, there you have it. If I got the calculations correct, then this thing has about 25 to 30 milliseconds of delay. And I have done this on my gaming Asus monitor that has an IPS panel, so... Which, of course, is a whole lot of latency if you are playing competitive. But, of course, this is a casual system and you don't expect to play anything competitive on this thing. Maybe some of those fighting games, but even then, you're just doing it for fun with your friends on a two-player system. And on top of that, you do have the option to hook up to your computer and do some more casual gaming like that. And I think that pretty much covers everything in this video. It has been a really long video, over 25 minutes, and the conclusion is, should you get this thing? Well, if you have been looking at it for a while, it is on sale right now, so if you want to get it, get it now. Would I pay 200 Probably not, but since it is on sale right now for $155, I think it's more of a reasonable price. That said, having the ability to actually mod this thing and add a Raspberry Pi inside this box would probably make it a killer console that way. You can install your own games, even more consoles, and still be able to use these built-in controls, which is pretty awesome, and turn this into a computer that has built-in control. So, that is something I would do with it if you get this thing. Definitely build in a Raspberry Pi inside of it, and I'll leave a link for the video I have seen of someone doing it. I do have a Raspberry Pi 2B+, Plus, I think, that's been laying around for, like, years now. So, I'm going to go ahead, pop this in here, and uh, we're going to make a video about it eventually on Total Commander Channel. So, yeah, that is all for this video. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, if you did, hit the like button and subscribe and comment like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.